pressure drifting. Let's just find the basis for the subspace of the space that is spanned by this set. So this set has three vectors. One, two, and three. It means that we can basically form a matrix like A with these rows. So this is basically four, four, and eight, one, one, two, one, one, and one. Going back to the theorem, find a row equivalent matrix and basically find the number of non-zero vectors. Very good. So first of all, we can divide this guy by four. It is one, one, and two. Then you have one, one, two. So hey, we have a nice thing going on here. If I multiply the elements of the first row by negative one and add it here, you get zero, zero, zero. So we ended up having at least one zero row. This is just one, one, and one. So if I multiply the first row by negative one, add it here, you get zero, zero, and negative one. So we only have two non-zero vectors. You can simplify this more, multiply it by negative one, and then multiply by negative two and add it to the first row. This guy becomes zero. So we have two non-zero vectors. So what's the meaning of that? It means that the subspace of the space that is spanned by this set can be actually spanned by this set. One, one, zero, 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 and one. So the rank is going to be just two. So basically, write it this way. The set including one, one, zero, and zero, zero, one form a basis for the row space. Let's move in this way. Form a basis. for the row space of matrix A. What's the meaning of that? We are basically, so this new set with only two vectors forms a basis for this subspace. Subspace and by S. You can basically see it right here. The very first two vectors, these two rows, they are multiples of each other. So we have to get rid of one of them. 